Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Michał Rutko. Uh, I hope you're having a great uh, conversation, uh, con uh, conference so far. Um, so today we are going to talk about data platforms, uh, in particular about uh, the so-called modern ones. So we will try to figure out, first of all, what's so modern about uh, these platforms and what not so really. So finally, also, we will talk about uh, our take on this MDP popular topic, and uh, we will also share with you some experience uh, from the project uh, we uh, delivered so far. So uh, a couple of words about me. Uh, I'm a data architect and a data and uh, a technical product owner uh, at Getting Data. Uh, I've been around uh, uh, in the data industry for uh, about 13 years, and I'm especially enthusiastic about uh, data-driven transformations. And as you can imagine, that data platforms has a big role in that kind of process uh, uh, at many clients. So this is like how I combine things that I like with my uh, daily projects. So. Um, before we start, let's uh, maybe start with a quiz, like a very short one. So what do most highest performing companies have in common? Well, according to a uh, McKinsey survey, uh, shift to modern architecture and cloud adoption. Well, you might think, okay, this guy uh, brings another cliche we'll be starting to throw tomatoes and buzzword bingo uh, papers uh, um, and pulling out of your pocket. But let's be with me. I'll try first to define like what this buzzword is all about. And uh, as always in each buzzword, there is some uh, genesis that lies behind it, right? So let's maybe start with, uh, uh, like uh, trying to figure out where this modern data stack comes from, right? So we will be talking first about challenges uh, that traditional uh, data platforms have. Uh, then we will talk about uh, what are the needs of the users of these platforms that uh, mm, have to be addressed. And then uh, we will be talking about enablers. So what actually made this whole thing even possible? All right, so imagine that you're back in the office uh, after COVID times and uh, you meet uh, in a coffee room with people. Uh, so what do you what people usually do in these coffee rooms? Well, in Poland, people usually complain because complaining is our national sport, as you may know. Uh, we are talking about things that we don't like about our job, right? So they are also talking about what it's not right about their data stack, data platforms. They mention things like, okay, uh, there is too much engineering, uh, data-driven decisions uh, involve a lot of uh, IT support and data engineering. These uh, guys are always not reachable and uh, you know very expensive. Uh, so this means that the time to value is very long. And uh, uh, once uh, we have our data model working and uh, bringing insight, uh, the market, which is tends to be dynamic these days, gone far away from our use case, right? So um, the data we often deal with is also unreliable. Uh, so we never know whether we can trust these figures or not. Uh, and well, maybe sometimes uh, we make decisions based on our gut feeling because we don't trust uh, our data. Um, data documentation, I think that you might nod your head. I cannot see your faces, but maybe you will confirm that data documentation is something that uh, when even exists, uh, starts to be outdated very, very. Uh, soon after uh, the creation and uh, project structures each team has something different they are reinventing the wheels and uh, transferring uh, transferring uh, 
someone from one team to another means like learning everything from scratch. So uh, again, uh, we re hear that costly licensing brings another problem because uh, uh, analysts uh, and developers are limited to certain tools, certain stack, and uh, it's very hard to, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, try something else because we have licenses, because we have tools, and you have to stick to this, right? And a very uh, similar problem is vendor login, which is like also uh, associated with uh, the fact that, uh, you know, once uh, 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 you are uh, having one uh, set of tools, it's very hard to uh, try uh, something else. And uh, yeah, no flexibility. Um, um, whenever uh, you are using on-prem um, uh, platforms, sometimes you might end up uh, uh, um, reaching your uh, resources uh, limits, right? So, and it's very hard to uh, do whatever uh, business requirements bring to you. Okay, so everything that was mentioned here maybe sound familiar to you. These are these, uh, you know, coffee room talks that maybe you hear uh, when you're in the office. But let's imagine that these people are so frustrated that they uh, finally rush into streets and they bring some transparency, right? So what do, do these transparency look like? So we need to have self-service. We need to be independent, right? We need to have low code transforms. So we don't want Java. We don't want any kind of programming language. We want to do everything in SQL, right? So uh, some uh, data security guy is in the street and uh, he, I, he wants to sleep well. Uh, make sure that the data access is locked and uh, no data policies are breached and so on. And we want to have trusted documented data, uh, everything in one workbench. Uh, uh, so everything that involves uh, work with data integrated nicely. Um, simple to set up and use. Maybe some DevOps uh, would shout that uh, they just don't want to uh you know uh sit in this whole mess all the time so um project templates uh we have to have everything standardized and uh last but not least we want to have uh, uh our environment adaptable to the dynamic uh, market changes and we don't want to be stuck with the one solution forever uh, when we discover that there is a nice interchangeable component that we would like to replace in our stack. So CEO looking at what people are uh, brandishing in their hands, thinks, okay, maybe we need to change the way we think about data platform. And it brings me to the uh, last introduction of slide. Like, why is it possible uh, right now? So um there are a couple of things in the um industry that happened uh, uh recently we have cloud data warehouses which offer uh, flexibility uh for scalable scale storage and computing uh, we have uh, low code data transformation tools like dbt all the tra transformations uh, can be done in sql and executed on the cloud data warehouse we have data integration frameworks, like for example, Airbyte, uh, featuring many inbuilt connectors, supporting extraction and load of the data. We have modern data catalogs, for example, a uh, data hub uh, that uh, um, make sure that uh, data discovery is easy, as easy as never before. And uh, last but not least, self-serve BI tools which uh, uh, are responsible for modeling and visualization of our data. Well, so you can see that the technology is already there. So what is missing, right? So the technology doesn't solve all of these problems. If we add to this uh, architecture, data security and engineering or dev data ops, as we would say now, uh, best practices, we see what is new and what is something that 
for the people who have been in the industry for many years, it's not so new, right? So if we have these things together, uh, we realize, okay, this is why we have modern data stack or modern data platforms. All right, so maybe some of you uh, were waiting for this screen uh, from the beginning. Okay, what's your stack, right? What's your stack? But maybe some of you are now trying to stay, think, okay, maybe this guy is trying to pitch something. Uh, but before you're going to throw another uh, box of tomatoes on the screen, I'll just give you one disclaimer. This stack has no black boxes and our solution is based on popular cloud managed or open source tools, which means uh, that having this assumption and also a couple of other um, um, things that we always have in the back of our heads when we're trying to introduce something new to this solution. Uh, so these things are that we would like to provide a solution for any cloud. We would like to make sure that this stack can be extended and uh, containing uh, interchangeable components. So no vendor locking, uh, no uh, like problems with uh, trying something else. Um, we would like to make sure that we always check if we follow the self-service pattern that uh, we provide a stack, a solution that is easy to use for the analytics engineers, for the users of the platform. Um, we also, make sure that uh, mm, uh, this solution can be nicely uh, adapted by the product teams to work in the data mesh concept. Um, automation, as many things as possible, uh, at the same time, um, hiding the complexity of this automation from the end user. And uh, of course, data observability and discovery as a first class citizen, not an afterthought, right? Okay, so you might think, all right, I've seen this kind of stack many times already. So what's so special about this one? Maybe you uh, recognize most of these uh, items in the picture, but uh, I believe that some of you might not uh, know what is DP framework. Well, this is our uh, special uh, sauce added to this meal, and uh, I'll talk about this in the next slide. So uh, our goal uh, when designing the stack is to automate the whole workflow as much as possible, uh, <clears throat> making uh, at the same time making life uh, easier for uh, analytics engineer. Um, as I said before, just to you know, um, make sure that he doesn't need uh, any uh, like support from the IT, from the data engineering teams. Uh, so we aim to a configuration that hides all these um, complex stuff, uh, especially in terms of uh, deployment and configuration, right? So uh, a couple of functionalities that we addressed with uh, uh, these packages, which are open source, uh, um, are as follows, right? So uh, we have the images for, uh, for the cloud IDE, which is our um, analytics workbench. We have uh, the functionalities of uh, um, auto generation of a DAG based on the manifest uh, file uh, generated by uh, uh, by dbt um, we also automated the process of data ingestion and uh, um, uh, integration with uh, uh, with uh, bi tool like looker um, um, uh, we also um, created cookie cutters for uh, project templates this is how we deal with uh, project standardization uh, as you may agree, like many uh, data uh, projects uh, could follow uh, a same basis, a same uh, common uh, denominator. So we make sure that uh, um, the way uh, people work with data is pretty similar uh, and uh, based on some uh, wizard uh, that asks 
questions and pre-configures um, um, the environment, uh, uh, the user doesn't start from scratch all over again. And uh, we also uh, provided some tools that help uh, manage uh, the whole uh, pipeline and the whole environment, but I'll uh, give a quick tour, a quick deep dive on this in the next slides. Um, so, uh, first one is Data Pipeline CLI. Uh, this is a, a package that is meant to be a, a single place to interact with the whole pipeline. So uh, we um, have uh, created some wrappers uh, around uh, popular DBT, but not only uh, command line tools. Um, and uh, the, the general purpose of this package is to abstract the complexity from the analytics engineer. Uh, we also uh, plan to use this uh, package with other data transformation tools so it means that once uh, you have uh, this package uh, in place uh, for, uh, and we, for example, um, exchange uh, DBT for something else, it can be nicely integrated with other um, data uh, transformation um, operations, right? So um, it also handles uh, deployments, publications, and, uh, and uh, uh, and so on, communication with all the other uh, items in, in the stack. Uh, the other uh, tool that is in our DP framework is uh, DPT Airflow Factory, which uh, I already mentioned is responsible for uh, creating on the fly without materialization an Airflow DAG, uh, which is uh, easy to uh, um, um, <clears throat> understand also by not uh, technical people so uh, uh, and uh, it also offers uh, a nice way of managing the whole pipeline through the user interface um, the last thing from our framework that i would like to mention from the backend section because we're gonna uh, speak about the front end as well a bit is uh, uh, our uh, project template factory uh, which is basically a, a cookie cutter solution uh, for uh, the project uh, uh, around uh, data pipelines, right? So this is something that I already uh, mentioned. So th the way how it works is that you define in project templates uh, the fields that are supposed to be collected through the uh, uh, wizard and then the project uh, is easily based on such a template pre-configured for uh, the user. Right, so we have our backend covered, but what about the frontend, about, about the user interface? Uh, uh, that is very, very important here. So um, we tried to list like all the types of operations that these self uh, uh, service type of um, um, Mm, platform should uh, handle. So we have ingestion, we have data discovery, profiling, exploration, transformation, and so on. We, this is uh, like what we um, uh, had in mind when designing functionalities for the uh, platform, for the front end. So uh, as I already mentioned, uh, our uh, analytics workbench is can be deployed on any cloud, also on-premise, uh, with uh, the set of tools that is needed for all the data wrangling, the data discovery, and so on. Plus, there is uh, one more uh, thing that we also created based on the popular Backstage project. If you haven't heard about it, check Backstage IO. Uh, and uh, this is uh, an, some so um, called a marketplace for the, all the uh, applications for all the services that are available for uh, uh, the user. So you have all these GitLab uh, um, um, cloud tools available uh, under uh, SSO. Um, uh, so you need to only log in once and then uh, from one place you can navigate to different places uh, in the data environment. Um, so uh, it's not only about 
the the stack. Uh, it's also about uh, how we uh, uh, roll out this uh, stack to uh, our clients. So I have a one short example of uh, how we um, uh, delivered one of the projects. Uh, so uh, the technology is also only one part, but the other uh, part of the success is how you set up the project, how you combine the team. So here is an example how we delivered uh, such a platform in just four months, uh, being only uh, like five people or on our side uh, and uh, uh, one partner and uh, people on the client side. So. Uh, we uh, um, used uh, uh, Snowflake as our data warehouse. Um, and uh, for uh, ingestion, we used Airbyte for uh, uh, BI Looker. And uh, um, what is uh, really uh, also important is that was not only like some kind of MVP, MVP work, but also addressing some of the key uh, topics like data security um, and uh, and, and so on. Um, so uh, we have more uh, examples of uh, such uh, uh, rollouts. Uh, what is important here that, uh, as you can see, uh, the previous diagram was like GCP specific, but this platform was uh, uh, delivered on AWS with Snowflake, right? So this means that we really make sure that uh, the solution is uh, not only for one vendor or for one data warehouse. Um, so future plans, right? So the things uh, that are uh, top priority for us is uh, cost awareness at the moment, because we know that many companies struggle with uh, uh, financial problems, and uh, we need to make sure that uh, not only we address the use cases, but we do it in a cost-effective way. So uh, this is one of the key uh, priorities for us to make sure that we deliver these platforms uh, uh, together with uh, um, recommendations on how to do it cost-effectively, right? Um, apart from that, we are also working on extending this platform or actually combining this solution with other our platforms, which is ML Ops platform and streaming platform. So uh, that uh, whenever an analyst would like to leverage uh, uh, like ML Ops solutions or uh, streaming pipelines, they uh, use just an integrated framework, integrated uh, uh, platform. Um, uh, we also hear uh, from our clients that many of you uh, would like to be fully managed, which means that uh, we don't want uh, to spend a lot of time on uh, setting up everything, maintaining it. So that's why we uh, also try to cover uh, alternative uh, data catalogs, for example, alternative um, data orchestration, pipeline orchestration or data transformation tools, so that we are also prepared uh, for uh, the um, uh, uh, clients that would like uh, to be uh, uh, as managed as possible, right? Um, so um, uh, there is like a couple of uh, tools that we are currently working on in, in terms of integration. One of uh, the priorities also the DBT cloud, because it also offers some automation, some nice features, especially for um, the small companies. Uh, so uh, we were also exploring this uh, uh, direction uh, at the moment. Um, right, so we are almost at uh, the end. Uh, so maybe I'll just wrap up uh, like some takeaways uh, for you to take home, share with your friends at the bar, at the library. Uh, so, uh, heavy engineering is not a showstopper at the moment because we have a stack that offers uh, some lightweight uh, approach towards it, right? So, uh, technology is already here and it's getting more mature. So, some of these uh, projects uh, uh, got like one as a major version over the last couple of months. Uh, like one year ago, I think that 
uh, some of them were very, very uh, immature and open source projects. But right now we see that the community is very dynamic and uh, that uh, the popularity of certain tools is, is still growing. That is a good indicator that people and clients find it useful. Um, data democratization via self-service product teams. So uh, more teams uh, are now data literate, liter literate, right? So more teams are capable of making uh, well-informed uh, decisions based on their data, which is uh, a great information in terms of uh, uh, business optimization, right? Uh, evergreen engineering best practices, right? So uh, we learned that uh, there is no revolution. It's an evolution. We have new tools, but uh, some of the concepts stay the same. Some data ops, some engineering concepts. Um, and uh, what we found really uh, useful is that you don't have to be like full open source or fully managed. You can like pick uh, the best out of it and uh, build a, a platform uh, and uh, replace uh, items uh, whenever uh, you feel that uh, something is better in the market. And uh, last but not least, I know I mentioned it a couple of times already, data governance as a first class citizen, which means that it's not an afterthought, it's uh, addressed as of day one as a at the same time uh, when you write your pipeline. It's possible to make your pipelines uh, uh, deal with data quality, with uh, uh, observability uh, uh, concerns uh, uh, at the same time as they are developed. All right, so um, I'm not quite sure if you have a lot of time for questions, probably not, but uh, this is a QR code that would uh, lead you to a page where you can request a demo, where you can learn a bit more about our platform, about our stack. And for those of you who are active in open source, I really, really uh, encourage you to try out our solutions, try to challenge us, try to bring us some ideas. We will be happy to see more and more contributions to um, the stack. All right, that's it from my side. Thank you very much.